Tyler Perry is gay. I know he's gay. He knows he's gay. We all have friends that know he's gay. I've hung around Tyler Perry. I've known Tyler Perry for years. When Tyler Perry went out to clubs and party with friends and went in and participated in the gay lifestyle like everybody else, Tyler Perry's probably known, been gay since he was a little kid. And then I really got depressed and basically had a breakdown. Like it was like right after I boo booed in the shoes. <laughs> the boo booed in the shoes. I had like a full on breakdown. When Tiffany Haddish was a little girl after her father abandoned the family and left her with a mother struggling with mental health, she was bullied in school because her mom didn't know how to do her hair right. And she had a big mole or what she called a horn on her forehead. These days, it looks as if Haddish, who rose from the ashes of a nightmarish childhood to become one of Hollywood's hottest comedians and actresses, is hurting herself again, with several DUI arrests and reported bipolar outbursts. Comedian Tiffany Haddish says she's going to get help after her second arrest for suspicion of DUI. Police arrested Haddish on Friday in Beverly Hills after finding her asleep at the wheel. The comic is reportedly pinning the blame squarely on producer Tyler Perry, whom she says exposed her to terrible sights during their time working together. The Emmy and Grammy Award winner has been vocal about her mental health over the years, and she recently opened up about her lifelong relationship with therapy, including a mental health crisis at 21. I had like a breakdown, a full-blown breakdown, and went back into therapy, Haddish said. And that changed everything and gave me a different perspective. The 44-year-old Girls Trip star was born and raised in Los Angeles. Her mother was severely injured in a car accident. And a few years later, Haddish was put into the foster care system, which included court-ordered therapy. At 15, Haddish and her siblings were reunited and taken into the care of her grandmother, whom Haddish credits with saving her life. It was around this time that Haddish made her way into comedy. Her high school social workers offered her a choice, continue therapy or attend Laugh Factory's comedy camp. Haddish chose comedy, but the mental breakdown at age 21 convinced her to give therapy another shot. Since then, Haddish has stuck with therapy. First time I ever went to therapy, it was court ordered because I was in foster care and there was a lot of trauma that was going on. She says she's used it to advocate for herself and keep in touch with her emotions. If I did not have therapy now, I probably would be doing therapy in these streets. The actress opened up. I'd probably be talking to a whole bunch of people about things I don't need to be talking to them about. But it wasn't always easy to find a therapist she meshed with. After bouncing around to a few therapists, Haddish reflected that some of them found her a little too funny, given the situation. I get it, I'm a humorous person. But if I'm pouring my heart out, I don't need you laughing in my face, she says. Haddish also relies on her friends and faith. After having a bat mitzvah at 40, the Jewish faith is a big part of Haddish's life. I read my Torah every day, she says. I talk to my rabbi on a regular basis. I do my Shabbat dinners. I mean, I don't mess around. Now that she's in such a good place, Haddish is hoping to pay it forward and avoid detractors like Tyler Perry. In 2021, she opened up about taking parenting classes in the hopes of adopting or fostering older children. I want them to know I put in the work, Haddish said. I just want to bring them survival skills and share everything that I know with them. I want to definitely either foster kids or adopt and get them at like age seven. She added, they're still malleable all the way until I think they're 21. That's what I think. But I want the child to know, hey, I chose you to be here with me and I want to give you all the knowledge that I have. But it is easy to see why Haddish is being careful. As detailed in her new memoir, The Last Black Unicorn, the super funny star has come a very, very long way from overcoming CA at the hands of her schizophrenic mother to a troubled marriage. Haddish opens up about a lifetime of pain and how she followed her passion and found fame in spite of it all. Her biggest hope is that her newfound success will help finance proper care for her mom. I was told every day I'd never be nothing, she says. Now I look in the mirror and say, Tiffany Haddish, I love and approve of you. It was all worth it. Raised by her mother, a small business owner and grandmother in South Central LA since her father left when she was a baby and her stepfather often wasn't around, Haddish had a mostly happy early childhood. But when she was eight, as mentioned earlier, her mom was in a car accident that left her with severe brain damage. After the accident, oh my God, she would say the worst things to me like, you look like your ugly ass daddy, I hate him, I hate you, Haddish writes in her memoir. She couldn't get all her words out so she'd just punch me, just full on. Because of her, I can take a punch like nobody's business. Teachers would ask, why is Tiffany's lip busted? I didn't say anything. As bad as she was to me, I still couldn't help but love her. 
When Haddish was 13, her mother got into an altercation with a neighbor that changed everything. The police ended up taking her to the hospital. The doctors decided she's schizophrenic, she explains in the book. So, my mom went into a mental facility, and me and my four younger sisters and brothers went into foster care. I was in group homes for a while. I hate thinking about that. It was more like a prison. My comedy skills came in really handy. I thought that if I made these girls laugh, they wouldn't beat me up. But the bully girl said, Ah, B, we still going to beat your A. But you funny. Despite being bullied, the young comedian went on to serve as her school's mascot. At the school, you were the uh, mascot for the sports team. Yeah, I was, um, I was a school, high school mascot. I was a conquistador, so I was a Spanish soldier, so I was an African-American woman playing a, a Hispanic man. My routine was dope. I would watch ESPN to see what the professional mascots do. I figured this would be a great way to get a boyfriend and get laid, she writes. None of that worked out, but I did become the most popular girl in school. She added, the relationship got violent. Once at a comedy festival, Tom Green comes over and he is making me laugh so hard. My ex-husband grabbed me. He was like, it's time to go now. I had a nod on the side of my head from where he slammed me into the wall and marks on my throat where he dug in his nails. When I got on stage, everyone could tell I had been beaten. All those people wanted to help, but all I could do was push them away and then go back to the dude that was a me. Why? Maybe I didn't know any other way to be loved. So, her troubled past, coupled with the horrible experiences in Hollywood, especially in the hands of Tyler Perry, seemingly awoke her mental issues. Perry is a controversial figure for cinema aficionados and casual moviegoers, so it's no surprise that people love to speculate about his private life. Over the last decade, thousands of fans, movie critics, and entertainment writers have asked one question in particular. Is Tyler Perry gay? Over the years, the film writer, producer, and director has built a vast media empire from the ground up. From writing scripts out of his car to having more than 20 movies under his belt, it's undeniable that he's worked extremely hard for his success, but his private life seems like a mess. In 2013, Perry created The Haves and the Have-Nots, an American crime drama and soap opera. He cast a young actor named Tyler Lepley during the planning phase, with whom he seemed to develop a personal relationship. Lepley and Perry were seen together on numerous occasions, making everyday folks and gossip column writers wonder, are the two Tylers attached? However, in 2020, Lepley went on a podcast called Lip Service and denied the allegations outright. He asserted that neither he nor the other Tyler was gay. Despite this, the rumors persisted. A common misconception about drag and dressing up as another gender is that you need to be gay to participate. Tyler Perry's performance as gun-toting Medea made people doubt his straightness. After all, as some fans thought, how could a straight man pull off such a convincing and irreverent performance as an older woman? But that's not all. Around the time the haves and the have-nots started airing, a man named Walter Lee Hampton released a revealing YouTube video about Tyler Perry's suality. In the video, ex-friend Hampton talked about Tyler Perry as an out gay man when they met. He even said that their shared community of black gay men were Perry's first supporters. But what made these two become alleged ex-friends? Tyler Perry is gay. I know he's gay. He knows he's gay. We all have friends that know he's gay. I've hung around Tyler Perry. I've known Tyler Perry for years. According to Hampton, Perry asked his friends to keep quiet about his suality so he could maintain support from the local church. This was primarily because Perry had built a considerable religious following through his movies and didn't want to alienate them with his suality. Hampton said Perry turned his back on the black gay community that had allegedly supported him in the past. Shortly after the video was released, Hampton sustained injuries and needed over a hundred stitches on his face. He maintains that a glass door fell on him and his injuries had no connection to Perry. But do you think that was the case? Or he was seriously threatened? Over the years, Tyler Perry has identified himself as a staunch LGBTQ plus ally. But more than just voicing his support, he's demonstrated his passion in two ways. In 2016, he personally asked Georgia Governor Nathan Deal to reject a bill that discriminated against the LGBTQ plus community. Then, in 2019, Perry established a homeless shelter for women and LGBTQ plus youth located at his studio complex in Atlanta, Georgia. But according to his critics, he's simply hiding behind the closet. In fact, many fans find Perry feminine, leading them to believe that the billionaire film executive is simply closeted. However, femininity, perceived or otherwise, has nothing to do with a person's suality. So, as to whether Tiffany Haddish saw things she shouldn't have seen while working with Perry remains a speculation.
That, however, doesn't mean she's also squeaky clean. The actress recently revealed to the Los Angeles Times that she sometimes investigates the trolls spamming her social media accounts with hateful comments and finds a way to reach out to them directly. The girl's trip favorite said that online bullying got so negative over the last year that she hired a digital forensics analyst when death threats started coming her way. The analyst's research showed that 75% of these threats were created by robots in Malaysia and Iran. Despite her acclaimed comedy career, Haddish has become a polarizing figure due to her run-ins with the law. She was arrested in 2022 on suspicion of driving under the influence, and then she got charged with her second DUI last November. The charge was later dismissed. A lawsuit was also filed against Haddish in 2022 that claimed she g a fellow comedian. Haddish denied the claim, and less than a month later, the accuser asked a judge to dismiss the case. However, the online hate towards Haddish had already exploded, and her comment section quickly became filled with bullying. Haddish told the Los Angeles Times that she created a fake Instagram account under the alter ego Sarah in order to combat the online hate she was receiving and to destroy the trolls by gathering details from their personal life. I've learned how to find people's information, like I pull up the credit report or police records. You can do that for $1.99, Haddish said. Sometimes I get so mad that I'll get the phone number and I'll just call them. Oh, I have called people, honey, Haddish continued. They are shocked that I called. They'll be like, I can't believe you even saw that. You did a whole video, B. You made a full five minute video. On the internet, people think they can just say whatever and you are not gonna say anything. I try my best not to, but I'm a human being. Haddish popped up last year in Disney's Haunted Mansion and will next be seen in Sony's Bad Boys Ride or Die, the fourth installment in the action franchise headlined by Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. The movie opens in theaters June 7th and is expected to be one of the summer movie season's bigger hits. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.